Hey guys, today I'm going to go through building a radio app on the App Institute App Builder. Really quick and really simple to do. So let's get started. First step when you create a new app, you need to name your app, so your business name. So I'm building an app today on behalf of Soundwave Radio. You click on building your app and you come straight into the App Builder and you can choose your template. Once the template builder loads, you'll be able to see the multitude of templates that we offer here at App Institute. But obviously, right now, I'm going to be looking for the radio template. So I'm going to go into uh, communication, where our radio template is. Select the radio station template there on the right hand side. You'll see a short preview of how the template looks. Obviously, that's just a template ready for you to edit and just give you kind of inspiration on what your app should look like and the kind of things that you'll want in your app. So I'm going to press continue on the radio station template. In this step, you can enter your website if you have one, or you can skip this step. Entering your website just brings in the color scheme for your app. Alternatively, you can edit the color scheme at a later date anyway, um, or you enter your website at a later date. I'm going to skip this step for now. In here, you can pop in your uh, mobile number to get a preview link uh, straight to your smartphone. But in here, I'm going to skip this step for now also, and then it's going to prepare my template. Now, before we go into building the app, I just want to talk you through a few things that's useful to have in store ready before you start building your app. So here we go, a nice app checklist that I've pre-created. So when you're building a radio station app, you only need a few things, it's that easy to do. Your logo, your homepage background on a portrait orientation, all our backgrounds are 1080 by 1920. You need your brand colors at the ready, your streaming URL, key part of the radio station app to ensure the music is playing through your app a bit about you so an about us blurb and your business contact information a few tips and reminders throughout the process preview and test the app before launch push notifications you'll see them on our left hand side menu they're not supported within test mode but they will work once your app is live and you should always use the app institute preview app for a radio station radio stations are based on audio um, which is kind of a native feature of an app so you need to have uh, that preview app installed which really puts your app in the best light when you're previewing it so back to building the app And as we go into building the app here, so launch your app in three easy steps. For step one, the appearance. So you can just click the get started button here and that brings you into your theme and your images. So first of all, that color scheme, we mentioned it in the checklist a moment ago. I have my color scheme on my dock pre-prepared using my checklist. So my main color, the dark blue, and I have the hex code there that you can just copy and paste into the app. So I'm gonna set my header bar and my tab bar to be my main color. My tab icons, I like to set as one of my secondary colors, as I call them, um, just other colors that belong to my brand guidelines. So I'm gonna go with the orange on the um, tab icons. And the key to remember there that your tab icon should always differ in color to your tab bar so they're nice and visible. So kind of a good contrast of colors to make sure that the icons and the text below the icons are visible um, and easy to read for your users. Select a tab icon, the app, actual icon you're on itself. Always nice to have that as a color that's also visible. A white on a blue, for example, is a really nice touch there. So kind of light on dark or dark on light, um, just again, so it's visible to the user. You can go into the advanced scheme here as well um, and just check everything out. So your page background color, whether you want a transparent header bar or not. Um, a lot of our templates are set to 100% by default, but you can play around with those as you wish. Uh, and it's just wor worth just having a little look through to make sure these colors do match your guidelines and nothing you kind of wish to change. For now, I'm gonna leave it um, as that. The one I do like to change though is the separator line. Um, sometimes if it's different to your odd and even row. In this instance, my odd and even row are white. So a dark separator line, as I've got that set there is really useful um, and that works really well. What I can see, however, is these buttons. I haven't got any text on, so always a good thing to check. Uh, you're seeing the button text there is the same color as the button background. So I'm gonna change that to my orange as well, because that looks really 
um, nice on, on top of that background color. So I'm just going to go back into my document and copy and paste the color code back in to the button text there. I press OK and save there. That's my color scheme set. I'm happy with that. So I'm going to move on to the next step down the left hand side menu being images. And in here you'll want to create a loading screen and an app icon. So as you mentioned in the checklist, it's good to have these ready. So I'm going to go to upload image and I'm going to go into my um, folder I have ready for this and I have my logo with the colored background ready to go. Perfect size and that's there. So 1024 by 1024, a square orientation um, for your logos if you've not got one ready. And then you can just upload them into the app builder um, and then it looks perfect. You always see a preview on here. Make sure that's not bleeding out the lines and, and it's fitting in correctly. So it will be visible to your users when it's on their app homepage, uh, on their phone's homepage. So we save the logo and then we move on to the splash screen. The splash screen is a loading page. So this should always be something simple. doesn't need to be too fancy because don't, don't only see it for a couple of seconds whilst the app's loading. I just like to use my logo personally. So I just up, go back to upload image and I can use my logo with the background again. And then I can set the background color to match the um, color of my logo. So again, having your color scheme in handy here where I can just click into the background color and select background color. And there you see in my preview that that's the same color as the logo. So it all looks uniform and looks good within my brand guidelines. You see these lines here as well. So these are kind of cut off safe zones. So you'll always want to be inside this rectangle shape here, uh, not bleeding out of the lines with any text or imagery. That just means on all devices, it means your logo is going to be visible or your image is going to be visible um, without anything cut off. So bear in mind these safe zones whenever you upload an app to your background image. I'm happy with that now, so I'm just going to click save. And then I can go on to my uh, header bar. I can either upload an image from my header bar. I can have the text displaying like it's displaying there. Or I can go for custom text where you can enter in anything you like. Or you can leave it blank. I always like to leave the header bar blank because um, I've got the branding on my main page anyway. So I'm going to press custom text, leave that blank, and then press save. So that's my appearance done. And now I'm on to the content section. And this is really straightforward for a radio app. So I'll just click edit content. Now pre-created you've got a few tabs down the bottom which are most relevant to radio stations first tab being the home page that's just a standard landing page for any any app and with that you want to upload a nice home page background uh, it's going to entice users into the app um, and keep within a nice theme um, for your app so you go to tab settings here and you'll see the background is just blank there by default it will use your splash screen but we always recommend having a separate home page background um, than what you've got uploaded as your splash screen and here I'm going to go to select image again, just as I was doing previously, upload my image, and I have an app homepage ready to go with my logo and an image that's relevant um, to my um, to my radio station, to my to my business. Uh, and I'm just going to press save there. And there you go, the homepage is set. So the next tab I have is the listen now. And this is where in the checklist you mentioned you want to have your streaming URL ready. The key part of your radio station app is obviously the sound coming through and having your radio station playing to your listeners. So if I just go into my dock, I have my streaming URL ready here and I just copy and paste the streaming URL straight into the app builder. So I just go edit content here and then I can put in my streaming URL. By default, we have some text and an image on here just to show you what you can do with the page. You may want that, you may not. It does show a player, which we'll go to in preview mode. So I'm just going to delete that but what you may want to do as well is upload a background image. So I like to do that on, on this page. So I'm just going to go into my uh, tab settings again, select image, and then I'm just going to use the same uh, one I was using for my homepage background as well, because that's a nice business in keeping with my app's theme. And there we have it. That's all set. So I have my streaming URL copied in, my background set, and I'm good to save that tab. Then we have the next tab, which is the request form. Obviously, these are optional tabs. You can take in and out of the app. If you want to remove, you can do so there. But I like to have a request form in there. And it's actually perfectly laid out as well. So why do you want to hear a song, your name, your location, your song title, your artist, and why do you want to hear it? And then you can submit that request. And that form goes through to you on email 
um, which is really straightforward. So I'm going to keep that tab in. I don't think I need to make any changes there. So I'm just going to press save. But again, you may wish to add a background if you want, or you can just leave it um, as a blank background or use the default stock image that we have there. Uh, for me, I'm going to select an image again, and I'm just going to use my background with logo in this instance to keep it uh, nice and nice and clean. You might just want to use the same um, color you're using as well. So we can save that there. Um, and then the news tab we have is an RSS feed. Personally, I'm not going to use an RSS feed today, but if you want to use one of those, you can just copy and paste an RSS feed in there. Um, and I'm going to take that out now, but you can use that tab really simple to just copy and paste one in. And then you can have other tabs in. You may want a, a content tab displaying your schedule, for example, or you may just want a simple message at the tab, or you may wish to leave it there. The stream's in, and that's the, the key point of a radio station app. So this content tab is just another element of just you know how you can display your schedule if you wish to uh for example it's just a, a kind of dummy schedule in there that you can go and edit as and when you wish i'm going to remove that tab now but i do want a message center the message center is set here as users to admin that means that you can communicate with your users via a, a kind of message based system so someone can send the radio station a message and you can respond via the app builder or via the app institute um, crm app you want, when you're using this tab, it's always good to note you want to turn email notifications on. And that way you get alerts of any messages that have been sent. And save that and now I'm ready to go. So kind of the key thing now is to preview the app. So I'm just going to preview now and see if there's any changes we wish to make. Um, so immediately um, you're kind of seeing the app there, the home page. It's got a sidebar navigation by default. I think I might actually go and change that afterwards. So I'm going to show you how to change the navigation in a moment. And when you press onto the sidebar navigation, you get all your tabs there. So I can go onto the Listen Now tab, and you'll see my radio station is playing. We won't hear anything because we need to preview via the preview app for that, which is the key step that we mentioned at the start. And then I can run through the Request tabs there. Perfect. That's exactly how I want it to look. You can see the buttons working. All the text is visible. That's perfectly set. And then the Message Us tab is just an easy tab for your listeners to message you directly. And there we have it that's that's all set um, and easy to use the only thing i want to do is change to a sidebar navigation now um, i always prefer that on my apps and for that i can go to a custom layout or i can select any from the many pre-formatted layouts we have there but i like to use a custom element and then i can set a certain level of transparency um, and on this one i'm going to go for 100 percent transparent and i'm going to set to show my tab titles that means the listen now home page etc those tags under the icons are visible press save and then i'm going to preview again there and good to go and that's it that's how to build a radio app with app institute really simple and straightforward hope you like this video um, i hope to see you again on the next one soon take care bye